Hey everyone, earlier today we had patch 6.21 happening, so today I'm gonna go over the patch notes because there were some balance adjustments in that patch, as well as a nerf to a savage fight, which is something that we haven't really seen in quite a while, because uh, it's talking about the HP values of the fight itself. And we also have some extra stuff to go over in terms of illegitimate waymarks, which you might have seen during our weekly reclears stream. Um, from earlier this week, or I guess technically it was last week. Now, I also want to apologize in advance in case you hear some noise in the background, there's some construction work going on. I'm trying to drown it out as much as possible, but much more than closing the window, I can't really do. Um, so hopefully you don't really hear too much of that. Let's get started with our balance adjustments. So in this one, both Paladin and Warrior are going to be getting some slight buffs to potencies. As you can see for Paladin, it's for the magical stuff, so Holy Spirit and Confiteor are getting buffs. Expiation is the off-global cooldown, that one is getting quite a big buff. And then we also have two parts of your Blade combo getting some potency buffs as well. Kind of curious why they didn't do it to all three of them. Um, but yeah, we got two potency buffs in there as well. As for Warrior, hits your two combo finishers, Storm's Path and Storm's Eye. And then we also have Fell Cleave and Upheaval to kind of like make them burst a bit higher. In terms of their reasoning behind this, it's always nice that we can read this now. With the release of patch 6.21, several adjustments have been made to action potencies to address tank performance issues, primarily in the raid Pandemonium Abyssos Savage. For Paladin, although Paladin has difficulty dealing high levels of burst damage when compared to other tanks, they excel at maintaining high sustained damage even when handling battle mechanics by their way of ranged attacks. However, recent duties have been designed to include features that reduce stress on tanks and melee DPS jobs, such as significantly larger boss targeting circles. Because of these design choices, the unique advantage of Paladin's high sustained damage loses its impact. For example, in this raid here, I think P5 is like the only boss with like a somewhat smaller hitbox, but 6, 7 and 8 all have gigantic hitboxes, so the ranged advantage that Paladin has kind of loses its impact there. Using the 8 Circle Savage as an example, there are prolonged periods where the enemy cannot be attacked, as well as mechanics that grant increased damage to players, the Phoenix buff in Phase 2, further emphasizes the value of burst damage. In such situations, the job's incompatibility with the duty becomes readily apparent, and we'll take a look at some statistics from FFLUX as well, uh, so you can see this impact as well. To substantively resolve these issues, we believe a full re-evaluation of actions is required. That said, waiting for such an evaluation would mean prolonging the unfavorable state of Paladin. For this reason, we have elected to increase the potency of their actions in patch 6.21, as more significant adjustment to action mechanics will require more time. Such changes will be implemented from patch 6.3 onward. For now, we have elected to adjust actions that will improve the job's burst damage. So we're getting potency increases for now. In 6.3, we should see a more substantial rework. Uh, this should also be kind of important because in patch 6.3, we are expecting our next ultimate. And for that, we do want all of our jobs to be quite balanced, of course. As for Warrior, although Warrior excels at dealing burst damage through in the release, we found their overall damage to be somewhat lacking compared to the other tank jobs, so we decided to increase the potency of their actions. In 6.2, we focused on improving its basic combo actions, we made further improvements to the potency of combo actions, as well as to those that contribute to their burst damage. So that is why we are seeing the small buffs to Storm's Path and Storm's Eye, and then of course Felcleave and Upheaval. Now, as you can see over here, pulled up some FFLOX thingies from 99 percentile, so this is where the jobs are performing at their best. And when it comes down to a fight like Hegemone, P6 Savage, you can see that when we look at raid DPS, the tanks are fairly close to each other. It's about a 300 DPS difference, which isn't the worst in my opinion. When we look at ADPS, uh, which is where you can better see a tank's performance, because of course they don't bring any raid buffs to the party, you can see that it's a bit of a larger gap, but still nothing too amazing. In my opinion, like this is fine. Of course, it's not as amazing as it should be. It could be a little bit closer, but it's not the worst, especially when we look at how our DPS role is balanced at the moment. That one's kind of bad. But if we go to a fight like Hephaestus 2, this is where you can start seeing the difference become quite large. And this is because jobs that play really well into burst buffs, like for example our Dark Knight right here, they start to perform really well because they can make really good use of these burst buffs. This doesn't say that Paladin is just a bad job because as you can see it could perform really well on a normal uptime fight, but as soon as burst damage becomes a lot more important, 
Paladin just falls off really bad. So that is what they're essentially going to be trying to fix with this patch. Um, giving it a little bit more damage so that this gap isn't as big as it is right now. Uh, and then of course as we go towards the future, I'm just kind of curious to see um, what they are actually going to be doing with the job as they say over here. Um, that they might do some significant adjustments to the mechanics as well. So I'm kind of curious to see how this is actually going to change Paladin in the future. Are you just going to turn it into a burst job? Are they going to keep its identity of like magical ranged damage dealer as well? Um, or are they maybe going to change some fights to make melee uptime a bit harder to obtain as well? Um, we'll see in the future. I'm at least very curious for it. Because um, playing Paladin right now is kind of sad. Um, so curious to see what they're going to do with that. And going back to our patch notes, as you can see right here, the HP of Hephaestus in Abyssos, the 8th Circle Savage, has been reduced. Adjustment applies to both phases of the battle. Now the reasoning for the HP adjustment is kind of funny to me. In our endeavor to create an encounter more challenging than Asphodelos, the 4th Circle Savage, the team responsible for final adjustments spent a great deal more time than usual working on balance for this raid battle. Under normal circumstances, the DPS of this team serves as a base for determining a boss's HP value that results in clears as close to the limit as possible. However, as extra time was dedicated to testing this battle, the team's overall performance proved to be higher than usual. As a result, the base values used for adjustments were too high, with final values roughly 1% higher than intended. We have reduced the boss's HP to bring the battle in line with our initial balance projections. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. So they're basically saying we tested the fight for too long, we became too good at the fight, and thus we made it too hard. Kind of funny to me, um, but it's also kind of funny that they make this adjustment now and that it's only 1%, because this isn't really going to be affecting anyone anymore at this point. Whenever they make these like bosses HP values, they do this with week one DPS in mind. And of course, like sure, if you go for a week three, four, five clear, having an easier boss or a lesser HP boss is always going to make it easier to clear the fight, but you get more gear as you go on. And I always feel like if you're somebody that clears later on into the tier, it's mostly because you're trying to learn the mechanics and such, and not because you can't meet the DPS check. Um, but that's just, of course, kind of my opinion on it. I feel like this only really affects players that would have gone for a week one, maybe week two clear as you have lesser gear. Um, but as you go further into the tier, as you get more gear on your hands, uh, I feel like such a very small change to a boss's HP value isn't really going to be all that significant. But it's at least nice that they say like, okay, look, we kind of fucked up. Um, if you look at the clear rates for week one, I think they were three times lower than the four circle savage, which is quite substantial. So it was definitely too high, but I feel like adjusting this now is kind of too late. However, it's nice that they uh, like at least give us a reasoning behind why this happened. Last but not least, players will now receive the power of the Echo in Pandemonium Asphodelos Savage. This is for our previous raid tier, so don't worry, the new raid tier does not get the Echo just yet. So the last thing to then talk about is Waymarks, and this is mostly for the 7th Circle Savage. If you've watched me do my weekly reclears this week, or well, I guess last week at this point, uh, then you would have seen that we had some weird Waymarks, and they'll explain why that is over here. So the Waymark system itself. Waymarks are markers that can be placed on the field and therefore can only be placed when they are in contact with the ground. When placing individual waymarks, they are validated by whether or not they are in contact with the ground. If they are not, the waymark cannot be placed. However, in case of duties where the battle arena changes during combat, players are permitted to place waymarks for the changed battlefield after completing the duty and save them to be used in the future. As such, Waymarks placed loaded from safe slots are not validated by whether or not they are in contact with the ground. The Diamond Weapon Extreme is a very good example of this. When you start the fight, you only have the one arena, but when you finish the fight, both of the platforms are present. So you can save waymarks that are on that second platform as well. However, when it comes to the Seven Circle Savage, that's not quite the case. So in this case, first party tools were used to illegitimately place the waymarks at coordinates where they normally could not be placed. This placement was then saved and loaded by different players, resulting in the circulation of waymarks with illegitimate coordinates. 
Following an investigation, we have identified the original player who placed them and they will be issued an account penalty for illicit activity. So for everybody else that saved these waymarks through like Party Finder or wherever you found them, for this incident, as illegitimate waymarks can be saved and loaded without the use of third party tools or other illicit means, and may be difficult for players to distinguish their legitimacy, we will not be issuing account penalties for the use of illegitimate waymarks which were saved and loaded via the waymark feature. So if you were somebody that went into Party Finder, you saw these waymarks and you were like, wow, this really makes this mechanic a lot easier, let me save them and use them myself, then you will not be issued a account penalty. Moving forward, however, should you come across illegitimate waymarks placed outside of the battle area or any location where they cannot be placed through proper means, even after the battle area has changed, we ask that you do not save or load them. We also ask that you delete any such waymarks that you may have already saved. At this time, all waymarks placed outside of the battle area at the start of the Battle of Abyssos the Seven Circle Savage contain illegitimate coordinate data. However, future implementations, as the illegitimate waymark data is already in circulation and has provided an unfair advantage to players who have saved the data, and with consideration to existing player strategies, we have decided to allow all players to place similar waymarks in the Seventh Circle Savage without relying on illicit means. Specifically, certain fields will be made slightly larger to allow for the placement of waymarks at the same coordinates through legitimate means. We apologize that this will not be implemented immediately, as setup and testing for this will not be complete in time for patch 6.21. We will share an update when the implementation schedule has been finalized. Again, kind of funny to me that they're saying like, please delete your saved waymarks right now because it's not legit yet, but we are gonna be implementing a feature to be able to place these exact same markers in the future. However, it is kind of nice looking towards future fights because even though we might not be able to use it right now for the Seven Circle Savage immediately, if they do make future fights where we have arena changes like the Seven Circle, then hopefully they implement something similar like that for those fights as well, so that we can place those markers where they're technically outside of bounds at the moment um, to account for these arena changes. So this is something that is going to make it better in the future uh, or like make the game better in the future and I am all for that. So to quickly recap the changes that have happened, we get a buff to both Paladin and Warrior. Hopefully this DPS change uh, can make them a bit better and then I'm still waiting for like actual DPS role changes as well because the balance of those jobs is way worse than our tanks at the moment although both of these jobs could use a little push in the back and the 8 circle savage is getting a very minor HP adjustment so that it's going to be a little bit easier to clear you can already see the memes popping up of the 8 circle savage was harder to clear in week 1 and week 2 uh, but then again that's always going to be the case because you're doing it on minimum item level and not with 3 or 4 weeks of gear. Then of course you can read over here again to see why they did that and then you have the illegitimate way markers over here as well that will be getting a change going into the future as well but when exactly that's going to be we don't know yet. So that's everything that was in this patch. If you want, you can go read it on the lodestone yourself as well. But that's going to do it for me. So I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for their support. And I'll see you in the next one.